And the next experiment, voltmeter, that is conversion of galvanometer to voltmeter. To convert galvanometer into an voltmeter, we have to connect a high resistance in series with the galvanometer. And to check that the galvanometer is converted to voltmeter or not, we have to connect an voltmeter in parallel to the connection. And if we see the circuit over here, a high resistance is connected in series with the galvanometer. And now this galvanometer is converted into an voltmeter. And to check is this converted or not, an voltmeter is connected in parallel. And we can see the circuit over here from positive of the battery. We have three wires that is one to the lower end of rheostat and other to the galvanometer and other to the voltmeter positive. And you can check here from the positive of the battery we have three wires one to the rheostat lower end and other to the positive of the galvanometer and the next to the voltmeter positive. And the other end of the galvanometer should be connected to the resistance box. The other end of galvanometer is connected to resistance box. And from the voltmeter negative and other end of the resistance box, it should be connected to the rheostat upper end. So you can see here from voltmeter negative and other end of resistance box, both are connected to the rheostat upper end and the free end of the rheostat lower end should be connected to negative of the battery and especially for this experiment keep the voltage for 4 volts especially for this experiment only keep it for 4 volts and now we need first we need to calculate the theoretical value and we have the observation resistance of the galvanometer and this will be given to you and it is 100 ohm this will be given to you in the exam and figure of merit of galvanometer k and this will be also the given value that is 1.78 into 10 to the power minus 5 amps per division number of divisions on either side of the zero of the galvanometer scale on either side of the galvanometer we have 30 30 divisions we have 30 30 divisions on either side of galvanometer and let us substitute over here that is n and the current required to produce full scale deflection that is to produce full scale deflection in the galvanometer that is ig and here k is figure of mallet that is to produce one division deflection and there are 30 division so k into 30 that is n into k we will get it as 30 into k value that is 53.4 into 10 power minus 5 amps the maximum voltage to be measured and we can measure up to 3 volts so I had substituted here 3 volt and to calculate the resistance which should be connected in series the formula is R is equal to V divided by IG minus G and here the value of V is 3 divided by IG is 53.4 into 10 power minus 5 minus 100 my if this minus 5 is taken to the numerator the five zeros will be added that is three five zeros divided by 53.4 minus 100 if we calculate this we will get it as 5517.9 ohm and now remove the same resistance in the resistance box i had removed 5510 plus 7 that is 5117 ohm and now let us switch on let us switch on the circuit and first set the voltmeter for 3 volt by varying the rheostat vary the rheostat and set it for 3 volts now it is set for 3 volts and for 3 volts galvanometer is showing 30 divisions for 3 it is showing 30 and if you set it for 2 now again vary the rheostat if you set it for 2 volts yes the galvanometer is showing 20 for 2 volts it is showing 20 and the theoretical value and practical value both are same. Current 
and wrapper. And if you see the circuit, it consists of a battery and an ammeter, milliammeter is connected in series and the current should pass through the diode and to measure the potential difference, an voltmeter is connected parallel to the diode. And from the positive of the battery, we need to take two wires. One is to the rheostat lower end and others to the a milliammeter positive. If you check here, from the battery positive, we have two wires, one to the positive of the milliammeter and other to the rheostat lower end. And next, from the diode positive, that is P type, this is P type and this is N type. From P type, we have two wires, one to the negative of the ammeter and other to the positive of the voltmeter. So one to the negative of ammeter and other to the positive of voltmeter. And from the N type, from N type, again we have two wires, one to the negative of the voltmeter and other to the rheostat upper end. So here you can see from this is N type. From this we have two wires, one to the positive of the voltmeter and other to the rheostat upper end. And the remaining lower end is connected to negative of the battery. And one thing I had forgot, before all the connections, first you need to keep the instruments in the order as it is in the circuit diagram. And now the connections are done. We need to take the readings, switch on the battery and vary the rheostat and check out does the ammeter and voltmeter shows the readings are not. Here you can see both ammeter and voltmeter are fluctuating. Both are showing the readings. So circuit is correct. And now let us note down the readings. The voltmeter is showing zero. The current is also zero. Voltmeter is zero. Current is zero. And note down that for a zero it is a zero. And now for voltage 0 0.1. Yes now it is 0 0.1 that is one division 0 to 1. So each single division means 0 0.1. So now it is 0 0.1. Ammeter is again 0. Ammeter is again 0. So for 0 0.1 it is 0. And for 0 0.2, again a meter is showing 0 reading. And now for 0 0.3, again it is 0. And for 0 0.4, again, no it is showing 1 division deflection. Up to 0 0.3, it is 0. And for 0 0.4, it is showing 1 division deflection, that is value 10. And how to note this? Here you can see 0 to 100, that is 1 division means 10. 10, 20, 30, 40 and this is how you can measure. And next for 0 0.5, for 0 0.5 it is showing 4 divisions, that is 40. For 0 0.5, the value is 40. And next, you note down the remaining readings. For 0 0.6, it is 160. It is 160. And next, for 0 0.7, it is 400. 400. That's more than enough. And these readings are enough. And note down in the order of 0 0.1 difference. And now, let us graph the plot the graph and here is the graph along x-axis voltage in terms of volts and along y-axis current in terms of milliamps and voltage in the difference of 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 and current in the difference of 50, 100, 150 and you have to write the scale without fail that is 1 unit means 0.1 volt along x-axis and along y-axis, one unit means 50 milliamps. And for zero voltage, it is zero. And for 0 0.1 voltage, current is zero. 0.2 it is zero. And 0.3 it is again zero. For 0.4, it is 10. For small 
two boxes we will get the value as 10 since from here from 0 for one complete box it is 50 value and nothing but for small two boxes we will get the value as 10 so now the value is 10 for 0 0.4 so for small two box you note down the point that is 10 and x 4.5 it is 40 and x 4.6 it is 160 and next for 0.7 it is 400 and now join all the points and at 0.5 the current is increasing and this is called cutting voltage where the breakdown of junction will take place that is at 0 0.5 so note down the result that is cutting voltage as 0 0.5 volts and the next experiment focal length of convex lens and the setup is here and this is the convex lens which is placed at the middle and this is object pin and this is image pin and the distance between lens and the object is measured as object distance that is u the distance between lens and image is measured as image distance v and this is initial setup you can see over here you can see over here that is the inverted image of the white pen, the inverted image of the white pen and if we have a parallel axis, parallel axis error over that and now need to set this image, need to focus the image of white pen exactly over this red and have to remove the parallel axis error and now let us displace this and while displacing just Check the reading. Yes, now if you can see, if you can see, the image is exactly focused over here and there is no parallel axis error. That is, if you shake your head, both the image pin and this red pin goes together. Both move together if you shake your head. You can check over this. And now note down the object distance. That is measure the distance between the lens and the object. It is 50. And measure the distance between the image and the lens. That is 26. And now down in the tabular column. For object distance is 50 and the image distance is 26. And for the next trial, you move the object 5 cm forward. 5 cm forward. Now the object distance has become 45. And for the focusing image, you have to, for focusing the image, you have to move this image away from the lens. And meanwhile, you check the image and then focus and now you can note down here and just it will be the variation of just 1 to 2 centimeter that's it and you can note down the image distance the object distance was 45 and now the image distance is 27 and if we repeat the trial, that is by decreasing the object distance 5, 5 cm, we can now down the image distance and that is only 1 to 2 cm difference. And later, need to plot the graph for this and here is the graph that is along x axis object distance u and along y axis image distance v. And here the graph is plotting in the second quadrant. Since the object distance is measured as a negative, if you observe the diagram over here, object distance is measured behind the lens, that is U is minus U. And the image is measured before the lens, this is positive. So U is negative and V is positive. Hence that's why we had plotted the graph in the second quadrant, U is negative and V is positive. And take the 5 cm difference in each unit so the scale is for one unit 5 cm in both x axis and y axis and note down the points for 50 cm for u we had v26 so this is u 
and for 50 we have here it is 25 and when it 26 sir. for two small divisions the value is 1 for two small division this is 1 26 and next for 45 it is 27 so you 45 it is 27 and note down all the points and plot the curve then take an angle bisector that is angle at 45 degree and where it meets the curve draw the perpendiculars to the x axis and y axis note the points as a and b and check out the length of oa that is it is 30 and for small two boxes it is 1 so 31 32 33 34.5 is and again ob it is also 31 32 34.5 again need to calculate the focal length so f means oa plus ob divided by 4 that is 34.5 plus 34.5 divided by 4 that is 17.25 centimeter this is the focal length and the next experiment focal length of concave mirror and here we have a concave mirror and the two pins object pin and image pin before this for convex lens we had placed the object pin behind the lens but as this is the mirror this reflects the light the image and object should be on the same side of the mirror so here is the object and here is the image and before setting you can see that the two inverted image this is object the inverted image of object and also the inverted image of this red pin also you can see and if you shake your head the two pins are separating you can check it and now need to set and just displace the image Okay, and now it is focused. You can check. Both are moving together. The white pin is focused on red. That is the object's image is focused on image pin. And they are moving together. There is no parallaxis error. Initially, you maintain the object distance. Initially, you maintain the object distance as constant. This is object pin and the distance between the mirror and the object is said to be object distance and you maintain this as fix and you vary the image to focus and we had done that we had focused the image and note down the object and image distance and this is object distance it is 28 and you can note down the image distance that is 42. Here it is 42. Okay. And the object distance and image distance are noted. That is 28 and 42. And if you substitute this in the formula. That is we have the formula F is equal to UV divided by U plus V. That is 28 into 42 divided by 28 plus 42. We will get it as 16.8 centimeter. And then for the next trials. Just displace the object 1 centimeter. If you move the object away from the mirror, the image move towards the mirror. Just remember, if you move object away from the mirror, the image move towards the mirror. And if you displace the object towards mirror, then the image move away from the mirror. This is the hint for this experiment. And repeat the same procedure for the remaining two trials. And note down the readings and calculate the value of F. And then calculate the mean value. That is, add all the focal lengths and divide it by 3. And we got the focal length that is 16.91 cm. And next, uh, refractive index of water that is using combination of lenses. And in this experiment, uh, we are using a convex lens and a plane mirror. And between the convex lens and a plane mirror, we are placing the water and that acts as a combination of lenses. And here is the setup. And this is the initial setup. I had placed a plane mirror over that a convex lens. And this is the object pin. And if you observe now, if you observe now, the image is magnified and erect. 
image is magnified and array now displace the object and as you moving it up you will get it an inverted image and where you feel the size of image is same as that of the object where you feel the size of image is same as that of the object stop over here and focus the pins and now you can check the object pin and image pin both are coinciding and there is no parallel axis error that is if you shake the head if you shake the head there is no error and now measure the length from the lens to the pen and it is 17 cm and next place the water place the water on the mirror just place 2 to 3 drops not much and water should not exceed over the lens and if we see the image the image will be enlarged if you can't see the image just displace the mirror and then focus it where you feel the size of image is same as that of the object stop over there itself and then focus the nips but if you see now the tips are coincided but there is a small over, small error here so again we need to displace the object and the image seems to be enlarged so I am displacing it away from the mirror and then focus the pins and now it is set and there is no parallel axis error also and let us measure the distance between the lens and the pin yes and it is 25 centimeter that is 25 centimeter and note down those values in the observation part before that is without water we got the values as 17 keep the values for focal length of the convex lens and radius of curvature both are same that is 17 and next with water that is focal length of the lens combination we got it length as 25 centimeter so 17 17 and 25 and next we need to calculate that is focal length of the combination focal length of the water that is f f dash divided by f minus f dash that is 17 into 25 divided by 17 minus 25 and we will get it as minus 53.12 centimeter and just we need its magnitude that is we can omit the negative sign it is 53.12 centimeter and now let us substitute the value of focal length in the refractive index formula that is refractive index is equal to 1 plus r divided by fw so refractive index is equal to 1 plus r that is we had already noted down it is that is 17 divided by fw that is 53.12 now let us substitute it here and if we calculate we will get the value of it as 1.32 and the actual value of refractive index water is 1.33 and what we get it what we got is 1.32 that is approximately equal and the next experiment angle of minimum deviation for the prism and here they have a prism and it consists of three rectangular faces and two triangular faces the one is the base and the remaining one which produces reflect, refraction process and actually 
when a white light is passed through the prism we will get a spectrum that is a band of seven colors and the process is called as a dispersion since it undergo refraction when it passes through the prism and now we are calculating the angle of minimum deviation take a horizontal line and get the incident angles at 30 35 and 40 degree and this is the normal this is incident ray and for incident ray write the arrows the angle between the incident ray and normal is called as angle of incidence and here the angle of incidence i had kept it for 30 35 and 40 these are the three trials and you have to conduct five trials these are the first three trials 30 35 and 40 and place the prism along this horizontal line and its tip should be towards the vertical and this is along horizontal and now place two pins on the incident ray two pins on the incident ray and check where you get the straight line of the pins yes and now if you see here all the four pins that is the object pins behind the prism and the image pins in front of the prism all the four pins are in a straight line place the pins till you get in a straight line and next remove the prism and pins draw a line over here and this is refracted ray and this is incident ray normal angle of incidence and this is refracted ray and actually if there is no prism the light ray would have passed through this line when the prism is placed the light ray has to be deviated to this line and this is called as what angle of deviation this is the angle of deviation and now measure this angle of deviation using a protractor and place it here measure the angle of deviation and it is 43 43 degree and it is 43 degree in the same way repeat the remaining trials that is for 35 and 40 degree repeat the trials and we will get the readings that is for angle of incidence 30 had got it as 43 and for 40 it is 39 and repeat and the different trials and need to plot the graph for these trials that is along x axis need to plot the angle of incidence along x axis need to plot uh, angle of incidence i and along y axis the deviation d and here it is the graph along x axis angle of incidence i and along y axis angle of deviation d and for each division at consider 5 degree difference that is 5 10 15 20 20 and all and along y axis also it is 5 degree difference write the scale for one unit it is 5 degree difference for each x and y axis and point mark the points that is for angle of incidence i 30 we have 43 so here it is for 30 here it is 30 it is 43 this is 43 for two division two small boxes it is the value is 1 so it is 43 and next for 40 it is 39 that is two small wave boxes less than 40 and here it is 39 and for 45 it is 37 and plotted the remaining points and if we observe this readings and also the graph if we observe the both here the angle of deviation is decreasing 43 39 and 37 and then it is increasing 
here in the graph also you can observe the deviation angle is decreasing and then it is increasing so this is the value of minimum deviation that is 37 degree this is the minimum deviation d equal to 37 degree this is the result